Thank you. Thank you and welcome. So let's talk about choice. But first, this is me. My name is Michael and I work at Volvo Cars. And unsurprisingly, we manufacture cars. Uh, we also hire in Stockholm and Gothenburg. So if you want to join us, you're welcome. So, but why is choice bad? Uh, in fact, I, I don't think choice is bad, but the problem is that it takes time and cognitive load. And sometimes the actual choice we make doesn't really matter because there are many choices that are equally good. In fact, we don't always consider all the options that we have, even though we could. Sometimes we just ignore options. Let's take some examples. When someone ask you on Slack, what should we have for lunch? You don't consider, should I answer on Discord? Or should I send them a text? You, you probably just answer them on Slack because it's the obvious choice, right? You don't have to think about it. And the same thing, if you have your service up and running, connected to an SQL database and you have your JPA configured and you have your driver class, when you're going to make a car class, you don't think, do I need a document database for this? Maybe that would actually fit better for my car. You don't consider that. You use the same thing because it's already there and it already works. Maybe a document database would have worked for both cases, but since you already choose the SQL, that's what you're going to use for your next class as well. And when you're going to create a new web page, you might consider React or other frameworks, but poor Cobalt won't be in your short list of things to write it in. Why is that? Why, why can't you use Cobalt? I'm sure you can, but no one does it anymore at least. Why is that? We'll come back to this later. But there are choices that we have to make as developers in our day-to-day -day work. And some of them are actually kind of hard. So let's look at an example. We want to create a new service, something some of us do very often and some not very often. And in both cases, it's actually very hard. There are so many things to consider. What language should we use? Should we use something we get interested in on JFocus? and try something new? Or should we do so what we have always done and keep in the same tracks? Both are val valid options and are great things to do, but we have to choose. And then we have to figure out what cloud should we put this in? Or maybe this is not a cloud application, we need to have it on premise. Or maybe it's a Raspberry Pi that's the best choice for this use case. And then what architecture? That probably would be influenced by our other choices as well. And even though I think the obvious choice is always event-driven, people seem to have other opinions. And the same thing goes on. Choosing a database and deployment and where we should put it, how we should put it there, what technologies to use, the list just goes on. And if we zoom in on some of these choices, like picking a database, it's not only selecting what SQL database anymore. We have an infinite amount of options. This is just from the CNCF landscape with what they think are the most common options. And for most use cases, all of these are great, or at least most of them. And for some use cases, only a few of these actually make sense. But you have to figure out which one each time. And the same thing when it comes to monitoring. And you actually don't only have to pick one of these, you have to pick the ones that go together. So the choice gets even harder. And maybe some in your team love Grafana and some are in love with Datadog, so you'll have to fight. And this takes time and cognitive load. And if we actually zoom out and look at the entire landscape, this doesn't even include everything. There's no language in here. So, but there's so much, and no one can know what all of these are 
what to use when and how. It's just too much. And at least that's not how I think I bring value to my company, by selecting what technologies to use and when and how, and learn how to use them best. The choices I should make is how to make my company better. How can I help this company make better cars? That is probably not by selecting a logging framework. And still, this is what we have to do every day, all of us, time over and, and time again. I don't think this is what developers should solve. So I think we should be more deliberate about what we actually choose and make the choices on the right level and at the right times. The choices we make should make a difference for the company that we work at, and it should bring value to it. And we should most of all not take decisions in the same questions at, uh, as our neighboring team does. If they have already selected a database to use, I'm pretty sure we can use the same one. If they have decided how to deploy and what frameworks to use for continuous integration, maybe we should use the same and not try to invent the wheel again. Something I love to look at is how long it takes for a developer when they join and get their new shiny laptop. How long does it take for them to get an Hello World application into production? Is it a day, a week, or a month? I don't know. And I think all of those could be valid for your company. It depends on what, you, what your needs are. But I think something that I've never seen at is what decisions did it actually require? Did they have to figure out what logging framework to use, what language to use, and what database to use? Or was it obvious to them? A Hello World application can pretty much use anything. And something else I think is important here. Did they think it was fun? Was it hard? Did they feel they were in control? I've never seen anyone actually ask new employees this. But I think we should. So I think we should remove these issues. Make more things obvious. More things should be like when you want to make a web page selecting between React and Cobol. No one will pick Cobol. And we should make more things like that. And we all know that the obvious thing to do then is to force everyone. We gather the brightest people we have in a room, and they will make a list. And everyone will have to follow that list. This is a great way if what you want is for everyone to hate you. At least that's what's happened when I've seen it in the past. Luckily, I've only been on the other side hating the ones who do it. And if something goes wrong, if something is bad with your choices, everyone will blame it on you. Even if it has nothing to do with the choices you made, it's going to be your fault. And I don't think angry people is what we want at our companies. I don't think that makes anyone happy. I think there might be a better way. How about if we just ask everyone what they're using? What do they like and what don't they like? How's everything working today? And you might think now that, but this is not my job. I can't do this. I need to be management or something to do this. But I'm going to tell you a secret. You're allowed to talk to your coworkers, even people in other teams. You can go have lunch with them. No one will say it's something weird. Just gather the data together. Because data, everyone loves. And no one, well, OK, most people don't say no when you have the data to support it. And once you have the data, what everyone loves, what do they hate and what do they use? You make some stuff better. Because even in your teams, you're probably using stuff that you want to improve and make it easier to use. And then you can share that with the other team. And if you find things that everyone is using, but they all hate it, either stop using it or remove the reasons they hate it. There are so many ways that we can just improve. And unfortunately, I can't tell you exactly what to do, because all companies are different and all tech stacks are different. But I can give you some inspiration, at least, of what I've seen that works. 
the good people of Spotify open sourced Backstage, their developer portal. And in there, there's a section to create components, which is basically just creating new services. So with some configuration and yada yada, you can make it super easy to create a new service. And the only choices the developers will have to do is what name it should have. And I think that's a pretty good task to do. And if you don't want to use Backstage, there are other alternatives. Spring Initializer, for example, that I think a lot of people have used online, you can actually deploy that yourself and customize it. And now, if we have a single place where everyone goes to create their services, we can add stuff to that. Depending on how you work at your company, I don't know how to do this. But I can tell you that one thing that we do is that we deploy in Kubernetes and there we have operators. And using this, every single new service that's created can get a Grafana dashboard for the service for free. Do you think many people look for other things if they get a Grafana dashboard for free? I haven't seen it at least. And the same thing, if their service is automatically built and deployed using GitHub Actions, no one will consider Jenkins. I'm not sure anyone considers Jenkins these days anyway, but there are other alternatives. And we can also go deeper. It, this is not only about infrastructure. If we're using Spring Boot, we can create starters, for example. And you can do this in many languages and many frameworks. Make it super easy to use the Kafka you're using in the DAO. Every team shouldn't have to figure out how to authorize to your Kafka cluster. Every team shouldn't guess how your logging should look or how to use Swagger. If they get it for free, they will use it. At least I will, because I'm very, very lazy. And when things become more similar, you get some bonuses. Moving between teams, it's much easier if you don't have to figure out how the code is formatted, what language they're using, and where they're deploying. You can focus on business value immediately. And then you can actually start with embedding as well, which is something great. It's just borrowing someone from a team for a week, a month, to solve a complex business problem or something they have experienced with in the past. They don't have to figure out everything. They can just start working immediately. And the journey for new developers can get much easier because we can write amazing documentation for them on how to do it, where we outline all the choices and suggest answers to them and tell them what they get for free if they do it like this and what they don't get for free. So they can focus on their complex Hello World application. Because starting a new company is hard enough. You don't need to figure out how to deploy and build services as well. And just a disclaimer, I'm not telling you to make something that works with everything. I'm telling you to fit your situations to the tools you have. Make the amazing tools so you have less different situations. Because making a super complex deployment strategy, yada yada, no one will be happy. But if you have a small so set of tools that works great, more and more people will start to use them. And less and less people will try to be smart. Because people like me will love to be smart, but it's not really good for anyone. So with that, I thank you for listening. <laughs>